All right. Um, well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll wait a minute or so just to see if anybody signs in. Um, but my name is Rita Murphy and I am the admission counselor for North Carolina from Catholic University. And I've got my colleague here, Catherine um, Pierce, who is for South Carolina, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Kat. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm one of the assistant deans of admission and I work with students, as Rita said, from South Carolina. Awesome. All right. I'm going to get started here today. So just sharing my screen. Awesome. So welcome everyone. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to hear a little bit about Catholic University. Um, so right here we're just taking a look at an overview of what campus really looks like. Um, so we are here in DC itself, um, but we are in the neighborhood of Brookland. So we've got about 176 acres of green space. So lots of green space for students to spread out um, and really have that traditional campus feel. So I like to show students kind of, you know, where we're oriented in DC. Um, we're about 10 minutes up from, you know, the Capitol and kind of downtown DC, what you might be picturing. Um, but this is definitely, you know, more residential campus that you'll get the feel of with access to that city. So we're gonna take a look at um, what Catholic is all about. So um, we've got about 3,300 undergrad students, 2,600 graduate and law students here at Catholic. While we are the Catholic University of America, we are welcoming to students of all faith backgrounds. Um, so whether or not you are Catholic, there are plenty of opportunities to get involved in campus ministry um, or service. That's where a lot of our students, both Catholic and not, um, sort of overlap and get involved here on campus. Looking inside the classroom, we've got about a seven to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of about 19 to 21 students. So definitely that smaller class size, um, getting that personalized attention in the classroom. Um, so Catholic University actually started as a graduate research institution um, back in the 1800s. In 1904, we introduced undergrad classes. So we really have that background here of that you know, high level graduate research institution um, in the classroom. You definitely get that experience in the classroom, but on that personalized um, level. So really unique opportunity for our undergrads here. Um, again, you know, looking at that uh, attention to the student growth here on campus, um, we have dedicated four-year professional advisors that students receive who are cross-trained in both academic and career advising. So they stick with students um, for all four years of uh, here at Catholic University, helping to choose a major, uh, choose your classes, and then all the way to looking for internships, post-grad opportunities, um, working on cover letters, inter uh, interviews, anything like that. So you really get a lot of support uh, here at Catholic, both in the classroom and just on campus. So just to take a look at what's going on here at Catholic, we've got a short video for you here just to kind of give you a nice little overview. Welcome to the Catholic University of America. And welcome to Washington, D.C. Nowhere on earth is quite like this place. A research institution nestled in the nation's capital. The epicenter of world politics and influence. A gorgeous campus, the largest in Washington green spaces and beautiful buildings containing all the modern tools and resources needed for discovery and the development of new ideas. Just minutes from downtown, a place where faith and reason come together to inform and inspire everything we do. And a place that will set you on a path that will change your life forever. We're glad you're here. Students and faculty at Catholic are doing important research and leading innovation, like in our Rehabilitation Engineering Research Center that is improving outcomes for stroke patients, or startup incubator programs that bring different disciplines together to spark new ideas. Truly, this is an institution where you can choose and instead of or. You can be a college athlete and do community service. You can study journalism and communications and business. 
You can feel at home on a residential campus in Washington, D.C. And you can study abroad, like 40% of the students who come here. So while our Catholic roots make us prone to humility, we are proud of the work we're doing. And we think you will see why as you learn more. Welcome to the Catholic University of America. So that kind of gives you a nice little picture of um, just how many opportunities we have here for, for uh, students. Um, so we are a liberal arts uh, school here. So we've got a liberal arts core that students will complete during their time here at Catholic. And part of that includes what's called first year experience. So this is for all freshmen um, to experience together. That is four different classes that you'll take with the same group of 18 students. Um, so you'll take two classes in the fall, two in the spring, um, and they'll, they're called your learning community. So you get to know these students very well. Um, you'll get great uh, mentorship from professors uh, during this program as well and take excursions into downtown DC together. And they really just make sure that students um, acclimate well to the classroom here at Catholic, as well as just DC and the campus in general. Um, so again, looking for that, you know, strong support on campus, you really get that through there. Um, we also have an honors program here at Catholic. You are considered for the honors program upon application, so there's no additional uh, application to be considered for that. And this you can sort of look at as a minor. Um, so it's an additional uh, group of classes in what's called a discipline of knowledge track. Um, so it's classes grouped together in different themes um, within the honors program that you'll complete in addition to uh, your degree of study. We also offer special honors trips um, and honors housing and mentorship through the program. Um, if for whatever reason you aren't initially invited into the honors program when you apply to Catholic, you can always um, apply as a current student. Uh, up until your sophomore year, you can apply to be um, part of the honors program. So taking a look at all the opportunities here academically, we've got nine undergraduate schools of study here at Catholic, so lots to choose from. Um, some main things I will point out to you, so the School of Arts and Sciences, some of our popular majors within there are politics, uh, criminology, psychology, um, media communication studies, education, the natural sciences, so lots of options within there. Um, next up is the Bush School of Business. Um, we have all the Bachelor of Administration, uh, degrees within there, accounting, um, uh, strategy, management, and operations, marketing, um, and then we've got the School of Engineering, which also has um, so many options within there, uh, computer science, biomedical engineering, civil engineering, uh, and the reason why I mentioned these three schools together is because each of them have an exploratory option. So because there are so many options within there, we do give students the chance to apply into those schools, but under an exploratory or undecided major, um, which is a really nice chance for, you know, students who might be interested in business or engineering who haven't really had um, the access to those classes in high school and aren't quite sure, you know, exactly where they'd like to hone in their interests, you can start on the track of, of getting those business classes under your belt, um, be on track for that business major. But again, you don't have to choose that until sophomore year. But we also have a School of Architecture and Planning. Um, one great option within the School of Architecture is what's called the IPAL program. So students who know that they'd like to get their license in architecture um, can apply to be in the IPAL program. So this is the Integrated Path to Architecture Licensure. So an it's an accelerated program where students can get their license in about seven years or so, um, as opposed to 12 to 13 years, um, which is the normal time span. The School of Architecture and School of Engineering are really great with getting students hands-on experience in the classroom um, or studio space right away. So you really get to know if those majors are right for you. Next up is the Conway School of Nursing. This is our most competitive school here at Catholic because we do have a cap on the number of students who can be involved in this program. Um, if you are interested in applying to nursing, definitely apply into that school. It's the only school that you can't switch into at a later date. So the, the School of Nursing um, operates where the first two years you're technically in what's called exploratory nursing program. So you'll be taking classes um, to understand all the skills needed uh, to be a nurse. And then junior and senior year, you'll be completing your clinical work um, with your cohort of, uh, of, of nursing majors around you. 
Um, we also have a National Catholic School of Social Service, and within this program, we have a Bachelor of Art in Social Work, as well as a Bachelor and Master's um, program that you can get that done in five years' time. Next up is the Rome School of Music, Drama, and Art. Uh, in here, we have a lot of options for studio art, um, drama, as well as Bachelor of Music programs. Um, so if you're interested in any of the Bachelor of Music degrees, that does require an audition. Um, in addition to applying to our school through the Common App, which we'll go through in a bit, um, you will have to complete an audition to be accepted into those programs. Again, if for some reason, if you're not uh, invited into the Bachelor of Music program right away, but you are admitted um, as a Bachelor of Arts in Music, you can always apply back into that program once you get here. Um, Lastly, we have our two oldest schools of study here at Catholic, the School of Philosophy and the School of Theology and Religious Studies. Um, you'll be taking courses in these, even if you aren't majoring in them, um, definitely as a part of our you know, core curriculum. And that first year experience, you'll be taking two philosophy and one theology classes. Um, so you'll definitely get a lot of exposure to them. And finally, um, if you're interested in any of our pre-professional study tracks, that's pre-dental, pre-med, pre-vet, um, pre-law and the three plus three bachelor juris doctorate degree. These are all advising tracks, so they're not actually majors, um, but you can, you know, get involved with um, these advising tracks so that you can make sure you're taking the right courses in your undergrad and getting the right volunteer hours and everything for you to be the best candidate um, for those postgraduate opportunities. If you're interested in studying abroad here at Catholic, we have lots of opportunities for that. Um, 96 programs over six different continents our students go to um, each year rotating. We do um, have a flagship program in Rome that a lot of students take advantage of, which has semester um, and during programs during the year, as well as summer programs. So again, really something for everybody, depending on what you're looking to, you know, get involved in during your undergrad here at Catholic. Um, but, you know, in our Rome program, we have our own uh, buildings and professors over there, right down the street from the Vatican. So really cool opportunity to kind of take Catholic University and bring it abroad with you. Study abroad is open to all majors. Um, so we do make sure, you know, we can work with each student. The study abroad office um, can work with each student to really get them where they'd like to go. Even our nurses with such a, you know, strict schedule are able to get some summer um, or semester opportunities under their belt. So obviously there's a lot going on in DC, um, but Catholic is definitely not some, a campus that you need to leave campus to find something to do. There's always events going on on campus, um, whether that's campus ministry, events for worship or ministry with other um, students here on campus. Uh, we were able to have our freshman retreat this year virtually, so that was a great opportunity for them to really get to know um, fellow Catholic students, um, Catholic University students. And then we've also got plenty of opportunities for service both on campus and off campus. Um, we were actually able to complete um, on a lower scale one of our days of service this past fall um, on, a, on a weekend. So we had some students volunteering in person um, as well as virtually. But we do have over 100 student clubs and organizations as well as 25 D3 varsity athletic teams. Um, so again, really something for every type of student, um, whether you'd like to play on those sports or just cheer on you know, your fellow Cardinals. Um, we also have intramural and club sports, which a lot of students get involved in. Those are pretty fun um, to do a little less time commitment, um, but definitely just as competitive if that's what you're looking for. And 30% of our students are student athletes. Um, and actually 100% of our student athletes uh, normally take part in those days of service that I mentioned above. Um, so that's really, really great uh, to see as well. So kind of looking at where we are, as we said, we are in Washington, D.C. itself. So with that comes, you know, all of the chances that you have being in, you know, such a great um, capital city, all the resources here. Um, so we are a residential campus. We're the largest self-contained campus in D.C. with 176 acres of green space. Um, there is plenty, you know, to feel like this is a traditional residential campus, but we do have our own metro stop right across from campus, um, which we will see in just a moment. Um, we do have a three-year residency requirement here at Catholic, so students will live here from their freshman to junior year. 
And then you have the option to move off campus. Um, you don't have to, we do have the space for students to stay on campus, but you can live in some apartment buildings across the street um, that we have a great relationship with uh, on Monroe Street Market, which also has a ton of um, restaurants, uh, Chipotle, uh, Potbellies, a couple other local restaurants, um, as well as our bookstore. They have a farmer's market on Saturday mornings and artist walks on the weekends, um, I believe in the summer. So a lot is going on, you know, just in our direct neighborhood, um, which is nice for students to experience without having to necessarily go um, around DC. But if you'd like to, um, as I mentioned, we do have our own Metro stop right across from campus on the red line. So this is the train system within Washington, DC. Um, so you'll see here that it um, might look a little bit complicated, but um, as a person who grew up outside of New York City and never really quite got used to the subway system, I can say that this is definitely an easy one um, to pick up on. So really easy to navigate, affordable and accessible for college students. You can really get anywhere within the DMV area. So that's including Maryland and Virginia. Um, so with that comes a lot of opportunity for our students to get, you know, internships during their time here at Catholic. Um, you know, about 60% of our students complete two or more internships before they graduate. And part of that is just the accessibility of being able to get there. You know, you don't need a car or anything like that. Um, but just generally speaking, you know, you can get uh, down to the, the airport right from the metro, the National Mall, museums, um, all the Smithsonian museums, which are free, go out to dinner with your roommates. So definitely a lot to do um, here in DC. And here's just some examples. Um, we have had some great success with our sports teams in the past couple of years. So hopefully that will uh, continue for us. So taking a look at, you know, why Catholic University? So we've talked a little bit about, um, you know, that education background and that great support of advising here, as well as that DC location. Um, but something that, you know, you'll get a lot from students anytime you talk to a current student or even a, an alumni um, or even a staff member is that just that community feel on campus. Um, you step onto Catholic and you definitely feel a part of the community. Um, you know, you've got that smaller class size. You do have that access to getting to know your professors um, on a you know, more intimate level, um, as well as your you know, fellow classmates. So it's definitely a nice community here um, that you'll feel a part of right away. And so when can you apply to be a part of this community? So our deadlines um, come up first is November 1st. We've got early decision and early action. Um, these are the early decision one is a binding program. So if you if Catholic is your number one choice and you apply early decision, um, and you get in, then you have to uh, come here. Early action is a non-binding program, so you can be applying to other schools and still make that decision um, down the line. Our next group of deadlines is January 15th, essentially the same two options, just two different names. So early decision two operates the same as early decision one, that binding process, um, and regular decision is the same as early action non-binding. Um, some students who want us to, you know, see that entire first semester of classes or grades um, during their senior year do choose to that later deadline. Um, otherwise, the early deadlines you get to, you know, find out in December um, whether or not you can come to Catholic and have a little bit more time to make that decision. So how do you get here? So looking at the application process, um, what we require for application materials, we require the high school transcript, um, a school report and counselor letter, as well as a teacher recommendation. So we only require the one academic um, recommendation, but if you have an additional teacher or coach or someone outside, um, we will accept that. We just only require the one um, teacher rec. We use the common application exclusively, so we require the common application essay as well as, you know, all the activities um, and all other parts of the common app there. Um, make sure, you know, you're letting us know, even in the additional information sections um, this year with the COVID-19 specific sections, anything that we need to know to kind of put together the puzzle um, of your high school progression or just what's going on with you. Um, we also have an optional Catholic University statement. So our university specific statement, sort of why Catholic University? So why are you interested in coming here? Um, what are you interested in studying and why? Maybe why DC, anything like that. And there's no required um, amount of words um, or length for this. They're pretty fun on our end to read. And I always recommend um, to students who, you know, Catholic is high up on their list. 
all it can do is help, um, but that is, you know, optional at the end of the day. Lastly, Catholic University does not have an application fee, and this year we are a test-blind institution. Um, so we won't be considering test scores at all during the review process, so you won't have to decide whether or not to send um, those scores to us. So as we are reviewing your um, transcript and your application, we want to see, you know, your progression through high school. Um, so by doing that, we recalculate your GPA to a 4.0 scale. So we take any of the weight from your AP honors or IB courses out of um, those grades to see what you've received in those courses. But don't worry, um, that gets refactored in when we look at strength of curriculum. So um, we uh, assign a score one to 10 for each individual student by looking at what's offered at your high school and what you were able to take, what you were able to take advantage of. Um, so, you know, we're able to take the GPA and that SOC score and really determine, you know, your academic abilities um, in the classroom and determine if, if that will be a good fit um, for here at Catholic University. Um, then we're, you know, again, just looking to get to know you and your application. So your activities, your service, any leadership you've been involved in, um, your interest in Catholic University, which, you know, you can uh, put that across in the Catholic University statement. Um, and we also are offering optional interviews this fall. Um, so you can interview with your direct counselor. So Kat or I, um, you can get in touch with us to try to um, schedule an interview. Um, but again, those are optional. Um, it's just another chance for you to ask some questions um, and for us to put, you know, a face to a name. Finally, we'll talk about um, merit and aid, um, getting here to Catholic financially. So we do require the FAFSA and the CSS profile for full review for financial aid, um, and we do offer merit scholarships. So as I was talking about that GPA and SOC score, we are gonna use those to determine any merit scholarship. So you don't have to send in test scores to be considered um, for those scholarships. Um, it's still test blind, all around for the application review process. Those range from about $15,000 to $30,000. The $30,000 scholarship goes along with our honors program. Um, so if you are invited into the program, that is the scholarship that is um, with that. And from there, we're able to determine um, where you might land in, in those different merit scholarships. Two uh, that I will mention to keep your eye on, these are asked about in the common application, um, the parish scholarship and the legacy grant. Um, you cannot, we can't go back in and change it later. So I like to direct students' attention to these. The parish, parish scholarship um, is if you attend a Catholic parish or church, uh, that's $4,000 a year. And the legacy grant is $1,000 if you've had a parent, sibling, or grandparent attend Catholic. Um, so again, these are asked about in the common application. We can't go back in and change it later. So um, hard to miss, but definitely keep your eye out for those um, as you're filling out the common application. But with that, I will round out my, um, my presentation here. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you've got any questions, feel free to send them in the chat um, or get in touch with um, Kat or I. We can uh, I don't have our direct contact information, um, but we can, you know, you can find that on our website um, or we can write that here in the chat today. But other than that, thank you so much for uh, listening in today. All right. All right. Thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at CACRO.org. That's C-A-C-R-A-O.org. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at CACRO.org. Thank you again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.